so the Equifax hack has happened, and 143 million people are affected. That's like everybody. If you re- if you take out the children who are not old enough to have credit and the people who just simply don't have any credit, it's pretty much everybody. <laughs> Very few people not affected here because it's not. You didn't have to sign up for anything here. This is not. If you're thinking, oh, I don't use Equifax, I'm not affected. Well, this is just credit reporting. Did you finance a car or a house? Credit or card. open up a credit card, any kind of line of credit. Bank account. Then they <laughs> probably reported that to Equifax and you could be involved. Yeah, the article from Ars Technica is, it says it's very possibly the worst leak of personal info ever. Uh, they The executives are definitely freaking out and Ars uh, gives Equifax a really hard time um, for the response just because Equifax, it seems like Equifax was caught completely blindsided and they don't really know how to respond to it. And uh, yeah, it definitely shows. Well, let's look at the response so far. So if you're thinking, wow, this did this happened this weekend? No, it didn't happen this weekend. It happened six weeks ago. They've known about it for six weeks. And they've chosen not to tell you about it, even though this is really bad, a really bad situation. So that's weird. But then let's look at what they did. Well, they set up this nice little website where you can go and check out if you've been affected. But doesn't quite work. Yeah, the, uh, the, the hack checker is actually, uh, CNET describes it as a hot mess. So I don't really know what more we can, we can add to that except that. Uh, it is true that uh, Brian Krebs, a security researcher, uh, submitted his real information to it as well as fake and made up information. And on mobile, it said he was affected. And on desktop, it said he was not affected with both the gibberish and the made up information. So it definitely seems like that website is not working the way that it should. On top of that, People dug out and they find print that by using that website, you might have been opting out of the ability to take part in a class action suit. <laughs> now, Equifax has since said, no, 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 that doesn't affect this. But is that because they got called out on it? You know, so it's uh, you should not at this point do not depend on Equifax to help you with this. You must go into outside of them and deal with it yourself. This is very likely to be an extinction level event for Equifax. Uh, This may prove to be a fatal mistake for the company. If the company does somehow survive, I will be seriously surprised if they do not rebrand because it's that bad. It might come to a government bailout, which (laughs) sadly we've seen that will happen most of the time. Well, the dark web is saying, uh, oh, we've got the data and we'll give it to you for $2.6 million, except for the credit card numbers. But no one is sure that this is really the people who have it. They have set a deadline for September 15th where they're going to release everything but the credit card numbers. But $2.6 million is such a low number based on what this is. It makes it hard to believe because this is worth a lot more than that. Bloomberg has an article that says that three Equifax managers sold an unusual amount of stock before the hack was revealed to the public as well, including the CFO. Now, again, this was six weeks. So they're <laughs> saying, I don't know when the sale happened, but how long does it take? For this, like you say, it's extinction level. This is going to destroy the business, but don't bother the CFO with it. He doesn't need to know. Uh, (laughs) Is that plausible? No, no, of course not. I'm sure that's going to be playing out for the SEC before (laughs) too long. And the the sales, I think they sold, you know, like 15, 20% of their holdings. It was in the millions. So not an inconsequential amount of stock being sold there. Well, you know, in terms of corporate culture, Equifax doesn't believe that they should be responsible for this kind of a breach in the first place, which probably explains how they handled the data the way that they did, because they have been one of the the companies to lobby hardest for uh, killing the rule that protects victims of data breaches. So let's say that your data was breached, and as a result of that breach, your information's on the internet. Well, the person that did that is responsible for credit monitoring and, you know, all this other sort of stuff because they were negligent with the data. Well, Equifax wanted to kill that rule. And they actually, in their lobbying, in their arguments, they said, if you held us responsible for this and this were to happen, you would destroy our company, which was, you know, pressing it, wasn't it? Because (laughs) it probably will. It should. (laughs) Oh, but what can you do? So you've been affected. The the genie's out of the bottle. The hackers already have your information. uh, And you don't want to sign up to the website to see if you're affected because of the whole class action opt out. Chances are you're going to find out if you were affected before too long because the companies that do business with you are going to be notified and it's going to be like, hey, you need a new credit card number. Hey, you need a new you know, bank account routing number. I mean, I don't know. It's going to be a huge, huge mess uh, for individuals to try to deal with it. So clearly the solution is like credit card monitoring and stuff like that. A lot of these companies, Experian, um, 
TransUnion and Equifax, those are the three big ones, own, also own or have stakes in a lot of the credit monitoring companies. And mostly, you know, I hate to tell you, but mostly the credit monitoring companies are snake oil. Yeah. Now, some of you might have uh, automatic credit monitoring through your credit card or whatever. There are some things you can look at there, like your total amount of credit, if that number goes up, or the total number of credit lines open in the past year, if that number goes up, then you really know that you have to be worried. You also have to keep in mind it's not just about credit card fraud here. There's also tax fraud and identity theft implications here. Someone could file taxes with your name. They have your social security number. Remember that. They've got your date of birth. They've got your information. And that can be very bad. Like uh, if someone's working illegally and they need to file a tax return, well, now they just file it in your name. And that's, that's really unpleasant to deal with. Yeah, the situation is, is really messy from uh, pretty much all standpoints relating to finance because auto loans and bank loans and things like that, you can get with relatively small amounts of information, certainly the kind of information that you have from this hack. So pretty much the only way to stop it is to completely go dark on your credit report. And the way that you do that is called a credit freeze. Now, you can search. There are four total credit agencies that you're going to need to freeze with. Google that, find the phone numbers. There are numbers that you need to call and you go through the process and you freeze it. You have to remember to unfreeze it when you want to use your credit. So if you're going to buy a car or open up a Walmart card or an Amazon card or buy a house or something like that, you have to keep turning it on and off. But it's kind of worth it in this case. Yeah, how much it costs to do that varies from state to state. Some states by law mandate that you can turn it on and off at will and it won't cost you anything. Other states, you know, there can be a fee of up to $15 uh, to turn it on and off. But if you take into account, like, the cost of the credit monitoring software versus just turning it off so nobody can look at your credit at all unless it's unfrozen, uh, that's going to be less expensive. And if you do live in one of those places where it costs something, keep records of those charges because it's very likely that Equifax is going to have to pay for that. There's also something called a fraud alert, uh, but a fraud alert, uh, doesn't last very long. It'll typically only last 60 or 90 days, again, depending on the reporting agency and where you are. Uh, the fraud alert is a free thing um, to where you can be notified if somebody does open a, a new line of credit or whatever with one of these agencies. But, uh, you know, honestly, I don't think that these agencies have the people in the call center to be able to deal with the call volume to make this happen. Yeah, it's going to be insane. What maybe one of the good things about this is because it literally affects everybody, then you might not be left out in the cold like a lot of people are when they deal with this. Because it's like you call the IRS and they're like, well, that's your problem. Well, <laughs> in this case, it's everybody's problem. So yeah. eh, that's that's not much of a silver lining, but that's all you get. Yeah. If you want to read more about that, we've, we've also got a link to uh, uh, Brian Krebs. He's a noted security researcher. He's got an article on uh, how he dealt with the uh, you know, credit freeze and some common questions about the credit freeze versus, you know, the, the fraud alert and the stuff that goes with that. There's also one other kind of fraud alert, which is uh, if you have actually been a victim of identity theft and you have a police report to prove it, there are uh, special considerations you can get from the credit um, credit agencies um, to deal with that situation. So maybe that's, that's your credit freeze completely for free, even in a $15 area, because they don't want to deal with a headache either. Now, in a meta sense, one thing that you might want to look into is uh, we talked about the lobbying. The, they were very close to getting the FTC to go along with what they want. So in the long run, we need to hold the politicians accountable for this kind of crap as well as the businesses. This is not the last time something like this is going to happen. They're not going to make their security ro more robust overnight, even if Equifax goes out of business. The real problem is the lack of focus on security and the lack of repercussions when something like this happens. Yeah, all of these business systems are built on systems from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, principally the 70s and 80s. It was not built for the internet age. It was not built um, for there to be an online directory of everybody's full legal name, date of birth, the whole nine yards. There simply is not an inbuilt technological mechanism to prevent these kinds of things. So the criminal element is going to have a field day. Like th this was sort of the last hurdle, the last piece of information. And it's now available in the Equifax breach. So uh, it's pretty much doomsday in terms of identity theft and all this other kind of stuff. You can even, like there are certain places you can get payday loans and things like that. Just having a name and social security number, even without pulling a credit report. So you would still be vulnerable to that 
even with the credit freeze, but hopefully it's a low enough amount of money and, and low enough headache that it won't turn into a huge deal. Well, until they don't pay it back <laughs> and it's like hundred percent compounding and then they don't, they contact you six weeks later. Yeah. So to avoid that, well, we, we've laid it out for you. You know what you have to do. <laughs> Stop worrying and embrace the credit freeze is the best advice we can give you at level one. I'm uh, Wendell. I'm Ryan. And we'll see you on the forums. Let us know if anybody, if anybody starts getting weird credit card charges as a result of this, let us know because following that, this is going to be a story that's going to generate news for the yeah. next 12 to 18 months at least. It's, it was like Christmas for the identity thieves. <laughs> now even your 12-year-old neighbor can get into identity theft. It's going to be great. <laughs> <laughs> see ya.